Hey, manual therapy friends, it's Dr. David here, physical therapist over at El Paso Manual Physical Therapy. I'm bringing you today's research review Monday. We're going to be covering this review out of the Chiropractic and Manual Therapies Journal. It's called The Effectiveness of Manual Therapy for Cervical Radiculopathy. It's a, it's a systematic review. Um, now, real quick about cervical radiculopathy, we're talking about pinched nerves that are coming out of the transverse foramen of the, of the neck and they can cause pain down into the shoulder, arm, all the way down into the hand. Um, now, what I loved about this study is they're, they're looking at stuff that isn't normally looked at. There isn't a whole lot of research is what we found out. It's a systematic review, which is the highest quality research article you can get, but it's based on kind of poor studies. And it's not, it's not that the studies, there, there just isn't a whole lot of information out there. So this comes off as looking like a poor study. But what I'll say is just because there isn't data out there doesn't mean that it isn't possible for this stuff to work. Um, we just don't know. We don't have it evidence-based. It's not proven by research. And, and that's a whole process and takes years. So what I will say is I think manual therapy is highly effective. I'm biased, of course. Um, I'm going to scroll down to the ending here. They have a good list on the last page right here with uh, in the conclusion section. So what I wanted to highlight here is the, the best research that they got um, was that a combination of spinal mobilization with motor control exercises was more effective on pain and activity limitations than separate interventions or a wait and see policy. Separate interven interventions would mean they're just doing this, the, the mobilizations by themselves and no other treatment or just exercises by themselves and no other treatment. And wait and see is just, oh, it started to hurt? Well, let's wait and see if and when it gets better. So basically no treatment. Um, and what they found was the combination was the best. Um, if you look at all the other stuff here, they also did traction um, and what was the other things they did? They, they had a, a, some other um, uh, treatments they did here. You can look at, at them in the details, but hands down the best was manual therapy with exercise the other treatments helped but were short term even manual therapy alone like i have highlighted up here um, low level at cervical manipulation as unimodal intervention is effective on pain directly after treatment but not at longer term follow-up so um, that's what i loved about this study is that it is critical for us to combine manual therapy with exercise um, speaking from my side of, of what I do as far as manual therapy, um, you know, I'll find in somebody with cervical radic radiculopathy um, that there's a bunch of stuck joints. Usually where the, the nerve is most affected, you see like C5 or C6 commonly affected. Um, that segment in the cervical spine tends to be hypermobile or too loose, which means that above and below you have some hypomobilities. So it's hypermobile at C5, C6, or C6, C7, and then it's hypomobile C7, T1, or C4, C5, C2, C3, and C3, C4. And so mobilizing the stiff segments allows for freed up motion in those segments, which means you're not compensating with too much motion at those hypermobile segments. Um, and that's not even the whole picture. When I'm looking at somebody that has a, a referral pattern, you know, from into the shoulder arm, the common one is radial nerve. They, they have pain down here and they think it's a deltoid or rotator cuff problem, um, but it can be a radial nerve issue. I have to look at the whole nerve pathway. Let's look and see what's happening in the shoulder, what's happening in the brachial plexus. Um, it's not just about the isolated nerve root where it comes out of the cervical spine. So always think big picture. When looking at these research studies, they're looking at one specific area of the body, one nerve ending or exit of the spine, and that's just not the whole picture whenever you're treating a real cervical radiculopathy patient. So those are my two cents. Um, I'd love to hear your comments, your thoughts. Um, comment below here with, with something that you think was cool about this study, if you get a chance to look at it, or tell me about something special that you do for cervical radiculopathy patients, or if you're having trouble, um, if you need help with a cervical radiculopathy patient and this got you thinking about it, um, ask a question. I'm happy to answer. We'll talk soon. Happy Monday. Bye-bye.